Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm back with a joint review for two brand new LEGO Marvel Super Heroes Spider Man No Way Home sets. On the left, we have 76284 Green Goblin construction figure. It's got 471 pieces and retails for 35 US dollars. And on the right, we have set number 76298. Iron Spider-Man construction figure with 303 pieces. That one retails for 30 US dollars. I'm a fan of these construction figures in general, but I'll tell you guys right now, these are the best ones that have been made. I love these things so, so, so much. I just had to do a video on them because they're already some of my favorite sets of 2024. Before we get into it though, I do want to remind everyone that I am an employee of the LEGO group. However, all opinions expressed in these videos are my own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the LEGO group. And the LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO group of companies, which does not sponsor, authorize, or endorse this site. So I've got these two posed up in a little bit of a funny way right now. I actually built these at a work event last week. And so my coworker put them into these poses. But I really love them because I feel like they really bring the figures to life. And yeah, Spider-Man is dabbing, but he's a teenager. So I think that tracks. I think this just immediately shows off how well articulated these things are. We'll get to each of the figures individually, of course. But the only issue I had is kind of posing Green Goblin's legs on the glider to look a little bit more natural. But I just really love how Spider-Man's pose works out. So we'll go ahead and start by looking at him first. So he's starting out in the dab, but I think I'm going to have to take him out of it to show you guys some more details on him. But if you've seen one of these construction figures, you've kind of seen them all. It's the same thing with every one for the most part. You've got the movable shoulder pads, the movable head, uh, the elbows, the hands, the fingers. I still don't love these fingers. I prefer like the Exoforce arm ones. But I have to say on these figures in the red and the green, I think that these are the best I've ever seen this piece look when used for like a human or humanoid hand. Because I also know they're used on that Dobby figure and I really did not like them there. They just look very unnatural to me. Uh, but but yeah, I, I don't think it bothers me th that much on these figures the way it has in the past. I do really like the way that this figure is built. I think his colors are really well brought to life with a minimal use of printed parts. There are no stickers in either of these sets. That was a great surprise because I really thought that most of this was going to be stickers. But no, everything is printed. And maybe maybe there are no stickers in mech sets, but I could have sworn that like on Ant-Man or something we had stickers. We definitely had stickers on the Iron Man that kind of kicked all of this off, but all of that is printed and I think it looks fantastic. I do like the Iron Spider suit in general. I know some people don't because I have another coworker who is a major Spider-Man fan and he told me that he hates this suit, but I think he liked messing around with the figure too. And that's because it's just so much fun. These things are really well built. There's not a ton to say about them because the design is always the same. Like the articulation is always the same. The general shape stays the same. So like little details are added, you know, like the gold parts, like the colors of the suit, of course. But Spider-Man, I think, just really is like one of these basic construction figures, except for the addition of the arms. The golden arms at the back are really cool. They are a little bit too short, like in comparison to the movie, because in the movie, in Infinity War, of course, Spider-Man, like at one point, he was like dangling from the arms like on the ground and they were fully lifting him up above the ground. So I believe that they should be probably like twice as long as they are right now or at least like one and a half times. But that would kind of get too big. So like this still looks great and there's a lot of articulation with them. But I, I do kind of wish they were just a little bit longer. But I, I don't know, like they're still really, really cool. I love the way they move. So they're on this like rotating piece kind of like Doc Ock's tentacles are done on the minifigures. And then you can actually move these like down at the base of this piece. And then you can move them in this joint in the middle. And then you can also move the claw at the end. So you can really kind of like fold these things back. Like he's about to attack you with his pincers like an insect. I think I, I said that word really weird. But yeah, like you can fold them up and kind of take them away. Or you can kind of have them get really big and come out from behind him and like wrap all the way around his limbs. And so I just love the versatility of these parts. And I think that's why I like this figure so much. I have the other Spider-Man construction figures as well. Unfortunately, not with me in California, so I can't do a comparison. But the Iron Spider arms and the prints just really, really elevate this. 
So you can kind of tell that I tried to straighten Green Goblin out into a more normal pose. But yeah, there's just something funky going on with his legs. So why don't we talk about that first? Because I think it's amazing that he comes with the glider. I think that is why he why he's more expensive than Spider-Man. He's got like 170 pieces more. And a lot of that goes into the glider. But I'm also really impressed with the suit. So let me just take the figure off the glider first. This is what I mean when I say it's hard to pose it on the glider. His feet are locked in place, so it's just a little bit difficult to like find a natural pose for the legs. But I will pose these figures up into a different uh, pose like before the end of the video. So the way he attaches to the glider is just with a couple of Technic pins. And stuff does seem a little bit flimsy on it, but I actually think it's pretty okay. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this thing first. I think it looks fantastic. I love the blades on the front. I love the purple. There's a little bit of green. We have some awesome like jet exhaust coming out of the back. And yeah, like these pieces can move up a little bit. I think they're supposed to move around just so that you can maybe have an easier time posing the legs, but you can flip them up and there's like more detail under there, which is pretty impressive. Like this is a pretty nice build for just being an accessory. But I love that we're getting accessories for these buildable figures. I hope that we get more accessories for these buildable figures. The Star Wars ones weren't fully brick built, so that's why I like these better. But they did start getting into some really cool experimental stuff at the end by having like a whole Technic speeder bike build that came with a Scout Trooper minifigure. Or not minifigure, but a construction figure. I would love to see something like that done in the superhero. It's like construction figure theme. And maybe we're moving in that direction because we have Green Goblin's glider. I mean, what's to stop us from getting Black Widow on a motorcycle one day? I would love that. So I loved the addition of the arms as accessories on Iron Spider, but what I really love about Green Goblin is that he's the first figure that I think is fully brick built except for the mask. Everything else, the detail has been brought to life with only bricks, and that's what makes these so different from those Star Wars ones. I'm really impressed with the mask print, but I'm just really impressed with how all of the suit segmenting has been brought to life so beautifully just by using a bunch of tiles. Like, it looks so perfect, that's why I was so excited for this figure. This thing feels a lot more detailed than the other ones, like compared to Spider-Man, this guy has so much more detail because all of this is brick built. It's not just like large sections of green. Uh, the figure is pretty nicely finished off at the back. But I mean, you know, like Spider-Man has whole sections that just kind of look like this. And that's fine. Like it's definitely detailed enough. But Green Goblin, I think, just takes these figures to a whole new level. Like if you look at the amount of detail on like the legs, it's just it's so cool. Like how the feathering is done like on the side here on the front. It's, it's really, really nice. And so that's why I like this one so much. Even like the brick built like chest armor, I think that that's done pretty well. And I think a bunch of pieces might be new here in green. Like I don't think I've seen these socket pieces in green before. I've definitely never seen these fingers in green. I'm not a huge like parts person, so don't quote me on that. But while I was building this figure, I felt excited at how many parts I was seeing in these colors, and I wasn't really expecting that as part of the build experience. He is holding a couple of pumpkin bombs. Those are just like these Technic uh, like green ball pieces with like a little, or not green, gold ball pieces with like a little green pin and a stud in there, and they just attach to like an open stud on his hands. They are, no, they're a little bit more metallic-y orange in the movie, so I think gold was still a good choice because it kind of matches his mask, which is off camera right now, but the mask is definitely my favorite part of this figure. I love that print. It's so detailed. Like, it's, it's amazing. I love it so much. The ears are pretty cool. They are not the same color as the rest of the mask. That's a tiny bit annoying, but I'm guessing that they just couldn't be recolored into the same color green because they're definitely the same color as the rest of the mask in universe, but they still blend very well. You know, like it's honestly hard to notice that they're a different shade of green unless you're like focusing on it from this side angle. But from the front, I don't think you can really tell. And maybe that's helped by the fact that there's like, I think there's like a tiny little bit of lighter green printing in here. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe it's just the lights in my studio. Um, but I, I think it just works, you know, it doesn't really bother me that much. The only thing I don't like about the head build is this little chin section. 
it does look like a, a chin from most angles, but if you turn it to the side, like there's that, that massive piece of gray. And so that sticks out like a sore thumb that really does ruin the illusion. And I think it's the worst part of either of these two builds because these builds are just that great. I guess I could also complain about this because even like these ball joint pieces are recolored into green for green goblin. So usually like the gray locked mixel ball joint pieces, like they usually don't bother me too much, but I guess in this set, like, I guess, yeah, like a couple of more of these pieces could have been green and they aren't. So maybe I'll try to hunt them down and switch them out. But of course, like the Mixel pieces are not made in green. So those are always gray. And that's why they kind of stick out like sore thumbs. The ones buried in the neck, totally fine. Like you can never see that. It's just this one. And I guess this one that just bother me a tiny little bit. But if that's the worst part on these figures, I think that just really tells you how good these figures are, because everything else about this helmet it's just perfect like i love this thing so much the extra parts did get mixed together but you can kind of tell who's are who's and i love that we get an extra one of that newer technic piece on green goblin the boxes for these sets both depict the bridge battle scene from no way home and i think that they're awesome i really love how green goblin looks and i'll definitely be cutting out this box art and saving it because yeah it's just very well done Oh, and I didn't even realize that you can put the pumpkin bombs on the back of the glider, but that is really, really awesome. That's another great play feature. The instruction manuals for these sets are pretty typical. Again, don't love these renders on the front. They're way less interesting than the box art. And at the back, we don't have any ads for the other No Way Home sets or anything, so that seems like a missed opportunity. So for my final poses, I tried to get Green Goblin looking like how he does on the box, and I'm pretty happy with him. I think he looks excellent. Like, I just love that figure so much. And Iron Spider, I, again, I'm not really good at posing figures, so I don't like this as much as him dabbing, but I tried to have him doing, like, a double thwip pose, but I think I'm going to put him back into the dab because that pose just had more motion and, like, elegance to it, I think. But yeah, as you can tell, I really love both of these sets. I think they are the best construction figures that LEGO has done. You know, I really like the Batman one as well, and the Iron Man Mark 40, but these two are the best. Green Goblin is number one, and Iron Spider is number two, and I feel very comfortable saying that. I'm glad to see these getting better as time goes on, because I thought that they already started being pretty good. And I really hope we get more of them, because I do like these large-scale LEGO action figures. I know that they're not for everyone, but I personally really enjoy them, and I would love to get more, especially Spider-Man characters, in this format, because I think they do lend themselves really well to it. I do think both of these figures are definitely worth the price. Green Goblin feels like a great deal for $35, because that's only $5 more than Iron Spider, but he comes with way more pieces, and that glider is definitely more than $5 like worth of value. And again, he's all brick built. He's just really awesome. And I do want to make it clear that this isn't a sponsored review. I know I said I built this thing at a work event, but these are my sets that I bought with my own money. And I like took them to a work building event and then just built them physically there because I wanted to build them. So yeah, I love these things. They are so perfect. I just, oh my God, like I, I think that Lego Marvel is off to such a good start this year between the January sets, which I finally got that video, that collection video up on my channel a couple days ago, to these. I cannot wait to see what the superheroes team has created for the summer sets, because even the new Batman Gotham City set, like, I just love it. They are on such a roll this year, the designers, and I'm I'm loving everything they're putting out. So I haven't felt this good about, like, Lego Marvel and DC in a few years, and I hope you guys feel the same way. So let me know what you guys think about these sets in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, and check out my website, goldenninja3000.com, and I'll see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.